Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I'm an economics fresher at Trinity College Cambridge. So multiple viewers have asked me to talk about the ECA exam. So today I'm going to talk about the ECA exam and preparations for that. If you don't know already, the ECA by the full name Economics at Cambridge Admissions Assessment is a required test if you apply to Cambridge for Economics Bachelor's degree. It is one of the key indicators in admissions along with interview and your personal statement and obviously your A-level grades. So it's quite important that you are aware of the format and ideally prepare for it by the admissions test. First off, the format. It's a two-hour test with two sections. Section one is multiple choice with questions in math. Um, it's divided into two parts, normal math and advanced math. The section lasts for 60 minutes. And section two is an essay, also for 60 minutes. All applicants are required to take the test and on the Cambridge official website, it says this year it will be on the 3rd of November so you can start preparing for it um, around October by my estimate otherwise you probably run out of materials. General advice it's important to know that the ECA exam is not really difficult by the technical definition of difficult for instance it has really difficult math problems or you have no idea what to write about in the essay it's nothing like that the most important issue with the ECA exam is that it's time pressuring. For the math section, you get loads of questions within 60 minutes. And with the essay section, you get an abstract from um, in a partial, The Economist, and you're asked to write about, um, yeah, you can write whatever you want, but ideally like four to five pages so yeah the most important issue is time So it's definitely necessary to know that you're pressured for time and try to speed up um, instead of what you do during a normal exam. You will also have access to a specimen paper on the official Cambridge website. However, in our year, um, it needs to be pointed out and people should be a bit alarmed, I guess, that the real exam can be much harder than the sample that they provided which has been our experience. So it's better to go over the past papers. So because they changed the format last year in our year, so um, the ideal paper that you can access that's most representative of the exam that you're gonna have is the 2020 paper. So you better save it till the end and have a go at it before your ECA exam. Now we'll be on to the math and advanced math section. So you have 60 minutes for both um, those sections. People usually say that it should be divided into two chunks. For instance, 30 minutes and 30 minutes. However, by the name, you can tell advanced math is more difficult. So it's actually a better idea if you spend 25 minutes on one and 35 minutes on the latter. By estimate, you should be moving on to the next question if you find yourself spending more than two to three minutes on one question because, you know, the most important issue is time and your pressure for that. It's very important that you have a clear structure for each section. Once you're finished with the 25 minutes that's allocated for the first section, uh, you better move on to section two immediately so that you're less time pressured. 
People have told me that often they have a few questions left at the end, which has also been my experience. So if you have like five questions still to finish in five minutes, it's actually a very scary feeling and you can be easily very stressed. So if that happens, one advice is that be focused on the question instead of, instead of the time because when you're too concerned about the time, it's kind of difficult to concentrate on the question and then get the right answers. So if that happens, focus on the question, on getting them completed instead of the time. Another reason to allocate more time for section two is because people usually score higher in section one. However, doing better in section two can give you a higher score conversion. What do I mean by score conversion? So in section one and in section two, each have 20 questions and there is a conversion table that Cambridge has provided that converts your raw score to a reported score. It's on a scale from one to nine. So in section one, we can see that to get a nine, you have to get every single question in section one or just have one question that you've got wrong. However, in section two, to get a nine, you can have four questions being wrong. So it's wiser to spend more time on section two and get a higher score conversion because during admissions, they get your reported score instead of your raw your score. And I'm guessing they put valuations on each part you also get a reported score on a scale of, I'm guessing, 1 to 9 or 1 to 10. They haven't revealed that yet. And you also get that for your interview as well. So in the end, they just put valuations on each of the reported score. Um, in my experience, usually, ideally, if you get an 8 or more, it's a safe bet. It puts less pressure on you for the interview. So yeah reference to the score conversion table and yeah trying to get that score cambridge has also published their data on our 2020 applicants on the website so for average people get 18 right out of 40 questions the best math mathematician got 39 to be in the top nine percent you have to get a 29 to be in the top 2%, you have to get a 23. So it's kind of like a bell curve. Another recommendation is that where I got those data is from a website called What Do They Know? It contains all kinds of information that people can legally request from universities on admissions. So if you have any concerns, you can just visit their website. I'm sure they have data on other unis as well. Then moving on to the essay section it's important to realize that the essay is actually quite important. It's nothing like the TSA essay. Um, many people compare the ECA exam to the TSA. However, in the TSA, the essay does matter a little bit less than the ECA exam. In our year, they changed the format and allocated one hour instead of four to five minutes to the essay section, which obviously means that they think the essay section is very important. So yeah, definitely put a focus on that. It's also reported on a score conversion basis. I, mm, yeah, I don't know if they convert the scores. So it's more like levels, like in A-level exams, you enter level one, level two, level three, I'm guessing you also get something like that. And then, yeah, it's on a scale of one to 10. So for an essay in the ECA exam, the structure can actually be quite flexible. It's not like you have to write uh, an argument and the counter argument, etc, etc. However, it's still quite important for you to plan the essay for a good five to 10 minutes. Some people may say that because you only have an hour, it's important to get a head start. However, if you don't plan your essay, it's kind of obvious that you will be easily distracted midway during the essay and it's easy to be off topic. So just spend a good 15 minutes for the most reading the extract that, the, that they're providing from the economist typically, underline any stuff you notice, highlight or use bullet point or spider diagram or whatever 
method that works for you and then have an internal conclusion. Then you can plan the essay, for instance, um, intro, what you're gonna write about in the intro, the main body, and then in conclusion. So in the intro, you should set the tone, tell the readers about the background and tell them what to expect into your essay. To write an ECE essay, like any essay, you should be clear, concise, and explain everything you're referring to and yeah, what you're saying. It's like an A-level essay. It's just that the examiners that are reading your essays are economists. That's true. However, it's, uh, you're still expected to explain everything very clearly. Assume that the reader is not an economist. For instance, you can explain like what low interest rates mean, how it's going to incentivize the consumers and encourage them to borrow more. Because the key part of the essay is explanation. As always, evaluation is important, extremely important in an essay. So in evaluation, you can try to show that you read stuff outside of the classroom by using key figures and points, including like general articles that you may be referring to that you read. Just like try to show off as much as possible. The method that you can use that's been recommended by my economics teacher at school is that before your ECA exam, before your interview and everything, you can just read around the UK economics, especially pay attention to metrics, for instance, exchange rates, interest rates, yeah, just anything that can be used in your essay and this will add a lot to the value and quality of it. To practice on a daily basis on your essay, you can read economist articles and summarize what they're talking about and try to like write an essay plan if you don't have enough time to write a whole essay. Also, when you're reading articles, always try to think about the economics behind the articles. For instance, how is this going to change the ADAS curve? And apply that and link that in your essays. And obviously, your essay will become better and better. It's extremely important to have a good knowledge of real life issues. For instance, what's happening on the macro environment, any global issues you should be aware of. A shocking observation made by my friend is that when you visit the official papers website on the Cambridge website or whatever, you can see our 2020 past paper. However, the essay title is not the same that they offered for us in the real exam so um, we don't know if it's copyright issues or just other issues it's just they didn't put the real paper up so my friend predicted that this year they're also uh they're still gonna talk about covid so yeah better get awareness on that on how covid is affecting everything besides that i've also found that some books are really useful for preparing for the ECA exam. For instance, last year I used the ultimate guide for the ECA. This year I heard that there's been a comprehensive guide 2021 that's been updated because last year they changed the format and um, they deleted problem solving and editing and advanced maths. So it's only a prediction. But this year based on our real exam, there's been an update. So it can be quite useful. It's contributed by teachers and successful students that got in. A co-author um, that deserves a shout out is actually my friend who's helped me a lot with this video. So a shout out to him and a massive thank you. Be sure to check it out because I'm sure it'll be very useful. If you still find yourself in need of more questions, my suggestion is for the math part of the, of the easy exam, it's kind of similar. It's not as difficult, but kind of similar to the MAT exam or the TMUA exam. So you can check out their papers for sure. If you're interested, you can also um, check out some step papers. It's very far away from our format, but it can definitely practice your math skills and yeah, creative thinking, whatever. That's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope it's been helpful. Don't forget to like and, sub and subscribe. Any questions, just comment below. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.